So the new map has dropped. <laughs> Hello, it's Paid Actor again, and today we're gonna take a look at the new map that they just dropped. As always, this map is available for private screening only so far, so if you wanna play this, you have to bring your friends if you have any. I will try to cover as much as possible. Item spawns, station spread, dead zones, powerful vaults, reddit steen or monster sighted, etc. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the graveyard. Graveyard has three stories with a lot of small elevation changes like in the ice station. These floors are church, graveyard and underground, with the church floor slowly blending into the graveyard. This map is long and that can feel big, but it's actually thinner on sides and because of that the size of the map is fairly average. And this is the layout of all stations, medkits and vending machines. You can also see them by names. There are 3 vending machine spawns and 5 trash can item spawns. Station spread on this map is fairly average. You don't see crafting stations spread across different corners of the map as it was in previous maps, making it so no matter the stigma order you will get somewhat consistently long patrol route. The church floor is definitely one of the most teen sided parts on this map. Mostly because of a lot of open areas, a lot of good windows on this uh, part of the map, and very huge uh, open space area in front of a church. And also there is a hole on the church floor that you can find only two crafting stations with uh, another shock station being relatively close to it, because it uh, needs only one elevation change. This place is quite fair for the teens. If the fire is the last station then this is probably gonna be the best. None of these are on the church floor. And if you get found on the fountain, you can just go towards the secure station in the upper cliffside and get a refuge here. The mid floor on this map feels like caves from the ice station, but four times bigger and with a little bit more space between walls. This increased space, however, is enough to turn the map into a snipe fest. The amount of bullshit sightlines is insane and a good slingshot that can abuse this map to the fullest. But if you are being chased and there are no weapons to help you out, then you should probably run towards uh, any of the windows. There, there's plenty of windows and most of them are fairly strong. And uh, speaking about windows, they have enough power to keep the monster at bay. For some reason, there are windows that let you recover faster if you walk from the specific side. And since there is literally a TL wall, you can pretty much buy time on your own without any weapons on the board and any weapon on yourself, which is a massive asset to your team. The underground floor is fairly monster sided, mostly because of all stations that are placed here are choke fest, which makes it uh, easier for monsters to kite out weapons and harder for teens to land a consistent hit. But if a team is zoned and cannot make it to anywhere outside of the uh, underground, they should probably go to the catacombs. But that's basically all that benefits the monster. Stairs on this map are completely teen sided. If you know these stairs on hotel and uh, on the facility, you probably know that uh, they are fairly monster sided, mostly because they provide a uh, good cover and teens have to go inside the staircase to actually pressure you from both sides. This is not an issue for this one however, because one team can pressure from one side and the other team can slide from the other, preferably with a molotov. You can even hit this railing and get a molotov right uh, down the stairs. Do you know that Dollmaster doesn't play around the warehouse catwalk in the facility? So yeah, imagine if all of the stairs were like this. <laughs> Time you get ambushed uh, on these stairs with an insta-kill weapon, you are forced to go into the other side. And while on the other maps you can break on inside try to lose the weapon, on this side, if you're running behind the stairs, you you can run right into another weapon. Unlock something like on parlor stairs, on any of the stairs in this map, you can pretty much run into a sightland of any weapon. And everything that I talk about these stairs is what makes them one of the most teen sighted things on this map. I think I can also talk about most powerful weapons and best monsters to play on this map. So in my opinion the best uh, weapons are gonna be Slingshot and Firebomb. A tier for Cross, uh, Sword, Flamethrower and Raygun, then B tier for Staff, Enigma and uh, Solo Flutter, and C tier weapons for mm, basically everything else. 
As for monsters, the best one's probably gonna be Deathwire, because he can shock through floors with ease. Then Werewolf and Ward might actually die for the second best, and Dollmaster can be the worst. We don't know how to play against the anomaly, so we'll see, we'll see. So I guess that wraps everything up. This map definitely has the potential of being highly abusable, but if a group of teens doesn't know how to abuse this map properly, then it's probably gonna be monster-sided. This is probably the same as with the researcher, where everyone thinks like this is a, the monster-sided map, while I truly believe that this map can be highly abusable, but I think the issues on the graveyard are going to be much more blatant than on the eviscerator. The real question is, will this map design be left as it is? Because uh, this map is still in development, this is a, just a preview, and the map can be changed a lot of times before the release. So, yeah. And then that's gonna be it for now. Leave a like if you think that this map is teen sided, write a skull emoji in the comment, and we'll see you in, uh, I guess, next week. And most importantly, have a good one.